So let's build a cattail fish net. We're going to weave a net out of these. And then the fish should swim through here. And then I just lift it up. I got him. I got him. Hi, I'm Greg Ovens, and this is Ovens Rocky Mountain Bushcraft. I've been here, this is my fifth time in Australia. I'm going to try to capture for you folks the fauna and flora, get some excellent video of the birds and have some adventures. The first part of this video though, for you loyal supporters, uh, introduce you to my family over here. I have a granddaughter over here that I just met for the first time. and. Uh, so I have to do things with family as well, but I'm going to get video of that. Um, introduce you to the family. Teach the grandson how to fish. I actually caught my granddaughter last time I was here, my oldest granddaughter, her first fish too. So going to have some adventures with the family, but I'm going to do some bush stuff. So through the trees here, you can see a house. This is a house that my son-in-law and daughter built. They're still working on it. They weren't quite ready for my arrival. Uh, I'm staying up over in the cottage over here. The cottage is more like a house. Uh, it's 10 acres they've got here with a pond that's got fish, so I should be able to catch fish there, different types. And this morning, just walking around early, and there's just so many birds, just parrots and crows and just variety of birds. I'm just walking around the acreage here and I found a dead toothbrush. Probably got bit by a snake. Australia has the most poisonous snakes and spiders in the world. This is the kind of spot that a snake would crawl under, under these type of rocks. And as a matter of fact, my daughter said that there was a king brown in the yard last week, just before I got here. So even here near town, there's the snakes. If I get bit by something, it's going to be big trouble. Even the small spiders here can be deadly. You can see things are still under construction here. Got the fire pit down here, which is completed. We're going to be using the fire pit a lot. Give you a panoramic here. Quite a nice spot for kids to grow up, I tell you. They just gotta watch the snakes. Keep an eye on your kids in Australia. Don't let them go playing unattended. I wanna thank Athletic Greens for sponsoring this video. With their drink, AG1, it's more than just a green powder. It's packed with uh, all the nutrients that your body needs, antioxidants, and also superfoods. Well, I just got my shipment of AG1 drink. AG1 helps immune system, gut health and digestion, liver function. Okay, well we're gonna try this out. Let's see what it tastes like first of all. One scoop with eight to 12 ounces, so a bit of a fake scoop. But that's all right. Looks mixed good. Let's see what it tastes like. Well, that's kind of unique, actually. It's hard to describe, but it's pretty good. And it seems like you only have to take it once a day. It says on an empty stomach or before breakfast, once a day in the morning. So, this is my first time trying it. Let's see how I feel after a few days uh, of taking the AG1 drink here. I'm gonna add some drops this time. Vitamin D and K. So I've been taking my AG1 drink for about a week now. 
and I'll tell you something, I feel a lot more energy. So this is an awesome way to get healthy. I'm going to stick with the program and I'll be in a lot better shape for more adventures. Click on the link in the description below for special gift offers from Athletic Greens. So thanks Athletic Greens for sponsoring this video. So I was up at first light and uh, had the camera rolling and uh, you can see in those uh, videos how many birds are out early in the morning like there's just different bird noises it's just unbelievable it's uh, not like home yeah there's birds but not so many at a time and these are different sounds that we don't hear back home so it's going to be interesting actually to uh, see the difference of plants birds and animals and uh that's it. Just down at the pond here, there's supposed to be fish in here. A couple of varieties apparently, but uh, just borrow one of the kids' rods and just give it a go for a few minutes. This is a private pond and see what's in here maybe, if anything. Just using a little piece of sausage. Yeah, I'll just lean this up and let's see. Yeah, there's not going to be worms around this area, that's for sure. Uh, no action yet. But here in these cattails behind me, which is a plant from back home, so there is cattail around, there was some koi swimming through the cattail. I think really I need like spinners and stuff instead of just a weight and a hook. And a piece of sausage like that's the thing when you go to a different area you've got to try to figure out what the fish in this area might bite on so at this point I'm not quite sure but I think I'll figure it out I do have a couple of uh, fish traps in mind I gotta figure out how I want to design them for these koi that keep coming through I can use some of the traps that maybe I'm not allowed to use back home so that gives me an opportunity to try some of these ideas and see if they work. So that is cool. So I'm uh, just wandering around the property here. Um, checking the different plants and this and that. I do know, I've been here four or five, five times now to Australia. I do know a lot of the variety of plants and trees over here as well, not just North America. Uh, for example, this here is eucalyptus tree. Of course the koalas eat the leaves of them. And they sh shed their bark here and go white like this. They will get the bark back but uh, there's quite a few eucalyptus trees in this area right on the property here and uh, the locals call them gum tree there's different varieties of eucalyptus of course and uh, i just want to take a walk through this bushy area and see what we can find that would be edible um, actually i see plantain narrow leaf plantain right here but let's have a walk around and I'll show you some of the uh, plants that we uh, can expect to find. So I didn't have to go very far and uh, here's a bull thistle. Of course you can eat the uh, stalks and stems. They haven't flowered yet. That's a good plant. And uh, here's a good example of uh, the eucalyptus tree. It's 
see how the bark just comes right off. All the things right off. <laughs> and then goes white like this. It'll grow the bark back though. There's a variety of pine trees here as well. So there's a pine tree. Narrow leaf plantain. So we'll be able to have tea. There's sow thistle in here. Good tinder. We're starting fires. Oh, that's young thistle back there. And here we've got some smart weed. That is smart weed. In this disturbed dirt, something I didn't expect to see, there is lamb quarters. I did not expect to see that over here in a dry climate. It likes usually wetter climates like Vancouver Island dandelion. Quite a few useful plants. And regular clover. More plantain. And just regular clover. Just like we always have at home. Plantain. And here we have the remnant of dock. It looks like it's already finished and it's gone to seed. So whether I can actually find any live dock leaves, I don't know. Because this is middle of summer here. Some of these plants are already finished and gone to seed. There's some uh, curled dock that uh, does have leaves on it. Yeah, let's see all the bark from this eucalyptus. Pretty thick stuff. It's like cardboard. Seems to be doing good. So everybody behave. The camera's on. If you're going to be on national TV, you, you have to uh, behave. Hey, uh, <laughs> Grandpa's filming, not taking a picture. I took out a kimple. He's going to fight him in his arms. Oh, no. Jane, just move away from the cutter, please. Just, just stand on your, your side. Stand just on your act side. natural. Yes, you guys are... Uh, if you're going to be an actor, oh, baby, you come have to side. act natural. Dakota, come stand on this side. Okay, okay. Now. okay now. Come over this side. Go close. She wants to be close to the fire, I guess. No, go it's close to the fire, but just stay away from Jamie so you don't poke one another. Yeah, that's fine then. There you go. I see. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mommy, I'm sorry. Never. <laughs> yeah, you got marshmallow on your chin. I know. <laughs> it looks like a beard. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm good with the marshmallows, thanks. I am. Well, that is a perfect marshmallow. <laughs> that is what I see. You reckon we're pretty talented? What? You reckon we're pretty talented? Well, well yeah. No, okay. Okay. Well, we're hey, careful, together. baby, it's hot. Don't put your hands in the edge. <laughs> <laughs> this side's very hot. Well, well, now my neck no, you want to do it? Well, no, you want to do it? Okay, come here. Go on my lap. Oh. Okay, now do it. Uh, uh, I'm down at the pond here, and uh, it's a private stock pond, so I can make fish traps and this and that. But I want to show you, I think what we'll attempt first is to make a dip net and try to catch these fish that they feed in and out of these cattails. I see the fish going in and out. So I think if I have a long handle, make a uh, net. I'm going to make my net. Just out of the cattail leaves themselves, we're going to weave a net out of these and uh, see if I can catch one. Um, I've got nothing but time and show you that in a survival situation, you can make a net strictly out of bush material, a dip net for catching fish that are swimming in and out of these cattails. And you'll see, we'll do the whole build. And I almost guarantee you we'll catch one of these koi. There is silver perch apparently in here. And uh, this will be an interesting project. I want to do some projects while I'm here. And show you in a different country. 
this is the same in North America. A lot of the lakes, a lot of the ponds have fish that feed in and out of the cattails. So even trout back home swim in and out of these cattails and you could use the same method almost anywhere you go where there's cattail and fish. So let's build a cattail fish net and see if we can catch one of these uh, either perch or koi. Just want to catch something with a homemade bush net that you wouldn't even have to have a knife, string, anything. Let's make a dip net and get a fish, man. You got to watch for the snakes around here. There's no doubt of that. I don't want to kill the cattail, so I'll just take a couple off of. But it's pretty strong stuff. some of this weeping willow. I basically want to just strip the leaves off. Poke the camera. You can tie these young willow right into a knot. It's pretty strong. hard to break, which is good for my net. A survival bush net. I keep emphasizing nothing has to look pretty. It just has to work. Yeah, I really like making stuff just out of bush material. See, there we go, there's our shape. That'll be big enough. Take my long ones and put them in a line. I can start going shorter as I go, but I want the long ones in the middle. So that's probably enough. And then at least in the middle, I want to tie another long one to each one of these. And square them up wrap the one and then tie it and then the next one go under and I'll go the opposite way and then tie that about that far apart so once I got it wrapped I'm going to tie each individual piece I'm just waiting for it to cool down a bit. I've used, basically, this is the only uh, weeping willow tree that I see around. And I've used all the pieces I, I basically could find that are usable. Because you have to use the young, uh, tender pieces to, to tie. But something else you can use, which I collected a, a bunch of, is plantain. The center stalks on the plantain and I got a piece here they're about 10 inches and plantain as well is very flexible you can tie your knots quite easily with that as well if you use the tender pieces on this it's quite strong and uh, they will work for doing the rest of my tying so I'm sure most of you know by now that as I start doing an idea, sometimes I change the idea. And in this case, in the middle for my net, I think I'm going to use a stick. And basically tie 
wrap my cattail around the stick like that so it won't move and then tie it and then I'll have to weave the other ones in and out well I had to come in where it's cool air conditioning and work on this and I'm like I say I'm just gonna wrap around this stick and then tie it and that'll keep my bottom nice Yeah, what are you what are you building? A shelter. So you put oh. those all together. Yeah. Is that good if it rains or what? Not if it's hard rain. Oh, it's pretty strong because it's secure to the sleeve. Secured? Yeah. Well, get under there. Let's see how it works. So, you like building shelters? Yeah. I should get you to try to start a fire with my ferro rod too, eh? Wait, what is Papa doing a barbecue? Yeah, we're doing a barbecue. Yeah, I'm going down. Hey, oh no, get under your shelter once more. Young Jaden, my uh, only grandson, making a little shelter here out of branches and towels. And it's pretty cool. You know, at that age to see people, young people, taking an interest. They got such a wonderful place here for the kids. I mean, it's just amazing. Other than the snakes and spiders, which they're pretty aware of even at an early age here. When you grow up in a certain environment, you get used to the dangers. You know what to watch for. I'll tell you, it's uh, quite the spot here. Good place for kids. I'm happy. Are you a cutie? Yeah. Are you gonna to talk to the camera for a second? Tell the camera your name. Dakota. Dakota. You're sure cute. You ha you like it here on the farm? It's nice, eh? Well, we're gonna have a barbecue, Dakota. I know. You know. What are you what are you gonna have on your on the barbecue? I just like dead and spicy bubblegum candy. Oh, are you gonna have some meat like sausage, chicken? Mm, no. I mean yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll see you down there. Okay. Yeah, see you down there, dear. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> see what she did? No. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't burn that. Yeah, no, because we're gonna be cooking now, Jaden. Oh, fly away. But I gotta show you the gym. I was pretty impressed. If I would have had a gym like this back when I was younger, holy crow. With the big screen TV, bunch of free weights over here, machines, leg presses. Free weights. And a live pull machine. A riding bike. A treadmill. Yeah, unbelievable gym for a home gym. There's the home gym. He's got as much stuff in here as Gold's gym. I'm telling you, it's something. Boy, I'm going to work out while I'm here. See if I can put on some weight. I didn't, when they said a home gym, I didn't think that they had, like, all this equipment. It's pretty awesome. I'm going to work out, see if I can get some weight back. All these survival challenges have worn me down. And uh, I'm going to try to get in shape while I'm here a bit. 
here in my daughter's uh, master bedroom and uh, she was showing me the other day the taping job on the ceiling here you can see every joint every screw every it is just ridiculous so I haven't done any drywall in two and a half years but um, I'm going to fix this for her. I mean, she's not happy with it. And she says it just bothers her every time she turns the lights on to see this. And it is ridiculous. So one thing I did do a lot of since 1977 is taping. So I'm going to fix this up for her. Yeah, that's how bad the joints are. On a painted ceiling, it's unacceptable. Bit of a project, but I mean, hey, whatever. I used to be a drywall wizard. watching me. How about if I sing you a song? Okay? Okay, it goes like this. When I used to drywall, I used to sing this song. If I had a million dollars, if I had a million dollars, wouldn't be no drywaller. <laughs> Pretty good song, eh? No, that's going to be on my album that's coming up. So, I have my stick with my cattail leaves wrapped around the stick and tied. So now, we'll put the net down and start attaching it before I weave the other pieces into it. The problem I'm having is uh, to find enough uh, materials to tie. So I think I'll use the inner pieces of some paracord to speed the project up. I've used all the willow I can find to tie. So far I've used just uh, plantain stalks and willow to tie it. So it can be done, but I'm having trouble finding enough tying material because there's a lot of places that need to be tied. So to speed it up, I will do that. And I always have paracord anyway. So, you know, I could have done it with bush material, but it would take me so long to find all the cordage I need. So to speed it up, we want to get this net working anyway. So, you know, you can use strictly bush material, but in this particular case, just to speed the project up, I'll do it that way. So don't criticize, empathize. So I've got my one end tied, I just gotta tie the other end. And basically it'll be a cradle net. I just wanna submerge it and then just lift it up like those cradle nets that people use when they're fishing. It's not gonna be closed at both ends because I want the fish to swim over it and see if we can't just get an unsuspecting fish that falls for this device. Those are the kookaburros. They sound like monkeys. They just do. And then the fish should swim through here 
and then I just lift it up. That is the theory, anyway. See how it floats. Yeah. Well, I'm going to need a rock as a weight. So I'm going to try to weave this type of material in between my cattail. So you can see how big this opening is, like basically, you know, five inches. Whereas here now, I've got this all closed in. A simple cradle net, and it's a new idea, so another experiment. But I'll bet you I'm successful with it. Just go on it, Christine. Well, I will watch her. Don't drop it on the floor. <laughs> Don't complain, Christine. I'm getting you on film. I'm filming you. I <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have to look after you. Don't go too deep. <laughs> Let me see it again. That once more. What are you doing? Huh? I'm just moving. You're just moving things. Yeah. So I got the one side finished. Sometimes they don't like to go. I think we're ready to try it. Just a nice cradle net, no big gaps. Only round the branches halfway up. But when it's submerged, I want the fish to swim in here above and then I lift it up. So I just gotta weight it with a couple of tennis ball, a couple of uh, rocks. Hopefully I don't need more. That's about three pounds of rock right there. And you see when it lies there, how it looks. When I lift it up, that's what I want. I'll put one at the back, one near the front. Now with the rocks, my handle is, uh, I gotta move this rock, it's too far forward. I think I gotta move them both this way. 
that's a little hard to lift. Okay, it's sinking. Get it in the cattails over here. Then we just wait for a fish. So I got it in the water, all camouflaged because they come right into the cattails. But I had to use a Y stick to hold it up at the right height. When they get to the trap, I mean, I can be back here at the other end waiting and hopefully it holds up. So as it turns out, I didn't need the rocks. Uh, with the rocks, it would have been way too heavy to lift fast enough to catch the fish. Uh, it was just too heavy and it's actually staying in the shape I wanted in the water just with the Y stick holding it at the right height. So morning seems to be the best for catching them or seeing them in the cattails, I should say. <laughs> Let them get used to the trap. And when I see them in the vicinity of the trap, I'll sit there and wait and try to lift it up with one in it. Right on. Well, I've been uh, sitting watching around the shore here, and now all of a sudden I don't see the koi like usual. Um, I don't know, kind of weird. Now all of a sudden I don't see them around, but. Uh, Sometimes you think to yourself that, oh, well, they know I'm trying to catch them, so now you don't see them. But I just came down here, and there's two big ones right near the mouth of my net here. The only problem I see with this net is it's pretty heavy for me to try to lift it up really quick. Maybe if I just do it slow until I ground them out. But uh, <laughs> there's two big ones right in front of the mouth of the trap, but they haven't gone in yet. This is ridiculous. I was sitting watching this big orange and black koi and I looked back at the net and there was one of these black ones going through. He went right through the net so they are getting used to it and I wasn't paying attention. I had my back to the trap at the time watching this other one over here and the black one went right through it so I missed one opportunity so far. You see you gotta pay attention Greg. Ay ay ay. There's an eel in here too, chasing the koi. I don't know if you can see him. There's an eel. He's coming right, there's an eel. He's going right in my trap. Maybe I'll catch an eel. This is weird. I don't know if these are electric eels, I hope not. Okay, I got an eel. I got an eel. There he goes. Oh, he got back in. <laughs> Did you see that? And this eel came right up to the camera because there was a koi there, so I was trying to get that. And I lifted it up and I caught him. I got him right on the bank. And he just scurried like a snake back into the, the, um, the pond. But that was exciting. I got an eel so far. Didn't retrieve it. Well, I think that's pretty epic so far. Um, you know, I had a koi go through my trap that I missed. I wasn't paying attention, and then I caught that eel. And uh, pretty awesome. It's working. It just takes patience. I was here at the right time to catch the eel, but missed the koi. So. We're still going to attempt to catch a koi and maybe another eel. Whatever I can catch with this homemade net, that's what I want to do.
I just had a koi going in my net. The koi was, got halfway in the net and then he backed out and by the time I got to it, he uh, had taken off. But uh, I'm going to get one, just a matter of patience. But I'm not going to eat these koi. I mean, if you do your research, koi in Japan are kind of a sacred fish. And as a matter of fact, they're so expensive. Uh, one fish, one fish, one koi sold for $1.8 million, almost $2 million for one fish. So it's not like I'm going to eat my son-in-law's expensive koi fish out of here. I just want to catch them. <laughs> I got one coming near the mouth of my uh, net. It's getting there. It's getting there. I got him. I got him. <laughs> He's in here. Whew. All right, a carp with my net, my cattail bushcraft net. Well, I better get this guy back in here. There he goes. Well, it's starting to pour rain now, but I got an eel and one carp. I call them carp or koi. Koi is a variety of carp. Pouring rain, I'll quit for now. And uh, if it quits raining, I'd like to get one of the orange koi and another eel. Because I didn't get a lot of video of the eel. So I'd like to get better video. It just scurried off right on. Okay, I'm back here. Um, it rained all day, so I didn't get back to uh, try to catch another fish and another eel. And what I find, or what I was noticing is I can actually stand here with my hands on the net and when the eels come through I seem to be able to get the eels fairly easily so um, they don't seem spooked by the net at all the eels but we had success either way with our homemade cattail uh, dip net there's the eel hope you can see them Sticking his head from underneath the trap. There he is. He's just poking his head through. So two eels and one koi with our uh, net unfortunately <laughs> i didn't get video of him in the trap when i took him out because uh, i had the headset on i went to push the button and it wasn't recording stupid the net works i'm happy with that so i think at this point it's time to just not worry about trying to catch another koi and just get on with other things this was a success one koi two eels but we got some underwater footage we got footage of me catching the first eel and uh, we got a close-up of that last eel so right on